This morning with a little exercise in one of those live blood sports that we do as developers called a live coding exercise. Uh, so, show you a few techniques for uh, writing automated acceptance criteria using a pattern called the screenplay pattern. I'm just going to be testing a very simple application. So it's a contact list, basically, where uh, you have a list of contacts. You can add new contacts and uh, then see the contacts uh, appear. So it's a simple Node.js application running on Heroku. Uh, so nothing very fancy. Uh, but hopefully, there will be enough to test to get uh, th so that we can fill up 40 minutes. Uh, so, what I'm going to first do is start off with creating a project. So, this is I want to create everything from, from scratch. I'm going to be using uh, Serenity. So, Serenity is a Java library. Now, there's also a JavaScript version, uh, which uh, provides built in support for the screenplay pattern. I'll talk you through what the screenplay pattern is as we go, because otherwise, that would be a whole talk in itself. So, you'll be learning on the job. Uh, so to speak. Uh, so, group will be SC London. Uh, contact list, that'll do. And now I'm going to import this project into IntelliJ. Here we go. So, the archetype is either Maven or Gradle. I'll just flick through the options. And here we have a little empty project. Now, this project is just an archetype, so it's a template. It doesn't really have very much in it. So the first thing I want to do is add a real feature. So it's got a demo feature, but that one's boring. So I'm going to add a new one. So let's call this contacts. I want to move that. And I'm going to create a, I won't bore you with writing the feature file. So I did actually prepare one ahead of time. So I have a little feature file here. So this is our feature or our feature file. The first feature, relatively simple, can we add a new contact? The second feature, which we do afterwards, is can, once we've added some contacts, can we view them all? Uh, so. Now, if you're familiar with Cucumber, you'll know that when you run a Cucumber test, which we happen to have just here, uh, let's get rid of the mass one, we don't need that anymore. If we run this, it will generate some templates, some skeleton methods that we can use. And so in here, normally I just code it directly myself you, most of the time, but uh, it does generate some convenient uh, skeletons. So let's create a class called contact step definitions. Definitions, I can spell sometimes. Uh, so, oops, wrong one. That should do it. And so now we have some empty start po starting points for our methods. Now, if we go through them, what do they actually do? Given there are no contacts in the list, now normally we'd clean up the database and prepare things. We're not going to do that now because that's boring. We'll have a look at data stuff later. Uh, let's get straight into the interesting stuff. Sally wants to add a new contact. Now, screenplay, in a normal traditional web driver test, you'd probably say, OK, we get a driver and we start looking up stuff and clicking on stuff. Don't do that in screenplay. Screenplay, the approach is that you want to model not the application, but the user behavior. Modeling the application, modeling the user interface, ties you to the user interface. It limits your thinking. What you're really modeling, your domain, when you're building an application, a set of application acceptance criteria, 
is the behavior of the users. It's not the application. You're already modeling the application. It's called the application code. The tests do not model the application code. So page objects, forget page objects. We don't use page objects in screenplay. We model user behavior. So that's what we're going to do. So we have this concept of actors. And Sally, ha Sally, who is a, I can't remember why she's called Sally. Uh, there was a reason. Normally my persona have meaningful names, like it would be Sally the supervisor. And I can't remember why Sally is called Sally. But anyway, she's called Sally. Sally is a, an actor. We also have some contact details here, where we have name, email, mobile, and work phone number. So let's pass them in as a map. So I'm just, I could use the Cucumber raw data table, but that's a bit boring, a bit tedious to use. So rather than that, I'll just convert it directly to a map uh, contact. And so now what I'm going to do is take my actor and do some stuff. But before I take my actor, screenplay, the, the reason we call it screenplay is, you, is that you have actors, you also have a stage, and you can bring call actors onto the stage and use those actors. But you have to set things up first. So you have to define your stage first. So we're going to set up a little before method called set the stage. And we need to do this to prepare. This is, we need to do it in Cucumber. If you're doing this in JUnit, you don't necessarily do it this way. But in Cucumber, you're basically saying, we want to name arbitrary users. So we want to be able to call them onto the stage by giving them a name. And you can have different actors with different names that might have different browsers. So that's what we're doing here. We say on stage, set the stage. We're going to create a new cast of actors. The simplest cast is an online cast, so a cast of actors who know how to browse the web with WebDriver. You can make your own casts as well, but this is just the simplest approach. Uh, so let's make that a static import. Come on, you can do it. Okay, let's make it a static import later on. Uh, so now we're back to Sally. So we've got Sally, actor name, and we've got our contact. So the way we would express this in business terms, in business terms, you will not say, uh, I'm going to click on this button, I'm going to fill in this field. In business terms, you would say, well, I'm a user, I want to add a contact. I want to open the application, I want to add a contact. So that's what we do. We say on stage, the actor called Sally, <laughs> she's going to attempt to do something. We always attempt to do things because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, so we attempt to open the application, I don't know, on the home page. I'm just making stuff up here. And then I might want to add a new contact with details. Uh, contact. So I've just made up a DSL there. I've just invented a DSL. And that's what you do in screenplay. You invent a DSL to describe your business behavior. And then you implement that behavior. So I haven't talked about screens or anything yet. I kind of had with the home page, but that's about it. Uh, so now I'm going to create some classes. These are what we call actions or tasks. So I'll put them in the tasks package. So open the application on the home page. This is a very simple uh, task. Now in screenplay, basically the way it works is you have an actor that performs tasks. Each task is an object. The object implements the performable interface. That's, uh, that's a command pattern. Uh, so here we need to return a performable. So I could create a new performable. I could say new performable and do some stuff. Or I could use a shortcut. There are a whole lot of shortcuts to make life a little bit easier. I could say task where, curly bracket zero, which is the name of the actor, where Sally opens the application. And what does this involve? Now, Serenity comes, in, comes with a whole lot of bundled tasks that you can use. And one of them is open. So open a URL. I'm going to be really, really lazy 
and just copy hard code the URL here. But obviously, normally you'd set it up as something a little bit more configurable. Uh, but that will that would take a little bit more time than we're going to than I want to spend here on this stuff. So that's all we need to do. We've got task where Sally opens the application. How does that work? Well, she opens a URL. Uh, so we're associ describing what we're doing in the business tasks and how we do it inside the tasks. Always those two, at least those two levels of abstraction. Now we've got add a contact. Now it gets a bit more interesting. So once again, this is a task. So I'm going to put it in the task directory. Now this guy, I want to make this a performable because it's a little bit more sophisticated and I want to show you both approaches. So implements performable. So the performable is a little bit more boilerplate code that you need uh, because you need to implement, to extend a, uh, extend, implement an interface, uh, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So here we have add a contact with details. I'm basically using a builder pattern. So this with details needs to return a performable which is this guy. So I want to return a new performable. I'm going to need to keep track of those contact details, so I'll keep them. I'll create a cons uh, constructor, keep track of that inside. So the builders are basically just uh, a DSL to create a performable object with all the parameters that you need to create to do the work. So here I'm just passing in a map, but I could have done something like create a new contact with name and telephone number and something else. I could have created a more fluent style DSL if I wanted to, which would probably be smarter in the long term. I'm being a little bit lazy here. Uh, so the other trick here or constraint is that for technical reasons, I need to create an empty constructor. I can explain in the break why. But for the moment, trust me, you need an empty constructor. Uh, so here we have our performable. And the real action happens here. So what do we want this performable to do? We want it to click on the new button and then fill in these films, fields. So new, what's, what's going on here? New is a, uh, it's a button, I think. It's a button, it's a button with a text. Boring XBAR stuff. So, what do I do here? I don't do any web driver stuff here directly. What I do is I describe the behavior of the actor, but at one notch down, one level down. So the actor attempts to. Actor always attempts to do stuff. But what's the actor attempt to do? Uh, we've already opened the application, so we just need to click on the to-do list new button and then we're going to need to enter some values. Enter the value of, so we've got contact, get, what was it? It was name, email, mobile work. Name, enter the value into the, well, the list is over here. We've got a new contact form. So I guess I'll call this a new contact form. So a new contact form. Uh, name. And I guess I could repeat that for each so name, email, new contact form, email, uh, mobile, I think it was, and uh, work. So you see here, at one notch down, I'm creating the DSL at the, the next level down. And then the last thing I need to do is click on the new contact form. It's not auto-completing for some reason. Maybe because nothing exists yet. So, uh, create. New contact form, create. So you see I'm discovering the code that I need. So this is a very sort of TDD way of working. I'm discovering what I need to code before I code it. So no second guessing. I, go, I figure out what I need, then I make it. So I don't waste time speculating about what code I actually might need. I just create the code that I do need. Uh, so this is a UI component. This is the closest we have in screenplay to page objects. But page objects normally have behavior associated with them. In screenplay, we, I could hard code WebDriver locators here. 
but that would be messy. Uh, so I'm going to have a separate class which describes how to locate them. Now, there are two a couple of ways I can do this. I can do a plain string. I can do a by locator. I can use what uh, a slightly more sophisticated approach called a target. I'm going to do that here just to show you what it looks like. The target is basically a locator associated with a label. And the reason we do that is locators can be messy and hard to read. Labels are easy to read. So in the reports, we can say Sally clicks on the create button, as opposed to Sally clicks on bruh, X path. Uh, so target the new button. And how do we locate that? Located by, and what was it? It was by some XPath. So I can type the XPath directly. Uh, so the XPath where the contents equals new. Uh, that look right? Yeah, maybe. You just want to see it fail, don't you? Uh, so here we go. That's our uh, our first target. Uh, then we do the same thing here, except it's a different part of the screen, so I've got a different object. Uh, why don't I have one class per page? Because, I don't know, maybe that form could be on other pages. Maybe the list could be elsewhere. What's a page mean these days? So I want I'm thinking more in terms of bits of the screen that have a, a similar reason or the same reason to change as opposed to just a page. And I'll group things that have the same reason to change in one place. So that's more my thinking. Uh, so in the contact form, they're all sort of related concepts. So again, I'll have a target. Uh, target name equals target, wrong target. the screenplay one. So target the name field located and I think, let's have a look at what this thing is. That's the email. So we've got a name equals contact email. This one is a name equals contact name. So we can do it by name. Located by name. This is contact name. So if we repeat that pattern for the other ones as well, we have name, we have email, uh, email field, contact email, uh, phone, now phone, let's check what phone is. It's contact phone mobile, and it's not phone, it's mobile. So contact phone mobile. Uh, and then uh, the other one was work, contact phone work. And then we had the create button, if I recall correctly. Yes, create. So that would be that name, email, mobile, work, and the create button, which would be located by X path, we can do this as well. But, um, and I would probably, I'll probably refactor that if we have time to make this common because that pattern, that button dot equals create is the same as the button dot equals new. So there's duplication there. So we could refactor that into its own little component. Uh, so that's our creation step. Uh, the next thing we want to do, assuming that works, is to check the outcomes. Now, when we check the outcomes, what we do is we query the state of the application. So again, we don't do WebDriver stuff directly here. We say the actor called, oh, we don't have the name of the actor. So we're going to have to take the actor that was last used. And when an actor gets called onto the stage, you shine a spotlight on them. And so whoever is talking has the spotlight. So we say the actor in the spotlight. So the actor in the spotlight, she does it well. There is a way of doing this with attempts to, but another way is to do it with the keyword should. So Sally should see that. 
See that is a uh, serenity method should, which takes two parts. It takes a question object. A question object is a way of querying the application, the state of the system, and a Humcrest assertion. So the question, we usually use a little DSL for this. We create our own DSL. So uh, we've got the contacts that we want to see. So we could say the contacts displayed. And so that, we want that to return a list of the uh, Joe blogs in this case. So a list of the elements that are displayed which is list group item, which I will copy here because I will need it very shortly. Uh, so the contacts displayed has item, uh, that's pretty ugly, let's make that an expected contact. Expected contact has item, so that is a Humcrest matcher, so any of those will do. And now let's create our questions package and our questions question class. Now the question is, well, tech, strictly speaking, it's a method. Uh, so I could have returned a string, but what I want to do is ask the actor what she sees. So the actor has the web driver instance. I want to ask what does she see? So I want a question, and the question can return anything I want. It can return an integer, a string, a list, whatever I want. In this case, I want it to return a list of strings because I want it to return this list here. And so what I could do is just create a new question. And I've got the actor being passed into this answered by method. So I can take this actor and do stuff with it. Now, there are some shortcuts. The text class is one of them. The text class is a way, a shortcut of asking an actor what they see, what text they see on a particular field. So if I say text of, uh, it was contact list, I think. So what did I call it? To-do list, it's not a to-do list, we'll have to refactor that. To-do list. Uh, Entries. So that again is a tag tree. Let's do a buy for a change. Because that won't appear in the report so much. Because it's a question, it's a little bit hidden under the hood. So we can say buy uh, CSS selector dot list group. And that's annoying me. I'm going to refactor that. That should be a contact list. Okay, so return the text. So we get the text, but which text? The one that the actor can see, because there might be lots of actors. And what form do we want it? We want it as a list. So we convert it to a list of strings. And oh, that's just a signal method. So we can convert that to a lambda. Uh, so that's our question. Uh, so that's our first scenario implemented. We have our no contacts, don't need to worry about that for now. We add a contact or we check that the contact is there. Shall we run it and see or do you believe me? Run it? Ah, oh, you have little faith. Okay, so let's run this and see if it crashes and burns. Okay, so that works. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is the view contacts. So now it's a little bit more sophisticated because we want to create some contacts and check that they exist. So I'm going to create, let's create all the step definitions in here. Uh, so we have the following contacts exist and we have a list of map string to string contacts. So at the start of the scenario, we say given all these contacts exist. So how does that work? Well, we're going to need an actor. So 
on stage, but we don't know who the actor is yet. So we say some random new actor, not sure who yet, but we can worry about that later. So a new actor attempts to, what's the, what do they attempt to do? Uh, open the application on the home page. And then we need to add all of these contacts. So let's take the contacts, pass in a contact which is a map, and then I'll have my actor on stage, could be the actor in the spotlight now because we've already started with an actor, attempts to uh, create, add, add a contact, add a new contact with details, contact. Uh, so let's replace, use some static inputs. And that's pretty much all we need for this one. So we're just reusing logic. So that's the beauty of using screenplay tasks, that you're modeling your behavior in reusable components. And so it becomes very easy to extend afterwards. Uh, so Sally views her contacts. Uh, let's give Sally a name. Actor, so the actor called actor attempts to, again, viewing the contacts as just opening the application on the home page. And then she should see the following contacts. So this is uh, similar to the previous one, but we're checking more than one. So here we have a list of string expected contacts. Uh, so we have the actor in the spotlight. What should she do? She should see that. And now we need to get the contacts again. So the contacts displayed. Now, this doesn't exist in Humcrest. You can't share. It's very hard to check lists against lists. So there is an assertion library that comes with, uh, well, it's a class that comes with Serenity called... Uh, collection matches, where you can do things like contains all the expected contacts, uh, which can be useful sometimes. So the actor should see that the expected contacts uh, contains all the, that the displayed contacts contains all the expected contacts. Uh, and that's all we need to do for that one. Do you believe me? Should I run it? Yeah. So I've just basically coded that one using the components that I'd already built. So that's one of the big things with Screenplay. It allows you to scale the tests. You spend a bit of time initially thinking about the DSL and coming up with a nice scalable, extensible DSL, and then it scales very well. It's easy to add, uh, add tests. It becomes very quick to add new, uh, new acceptance criteria. So it allows you to continue on in, a, in large projects that lets you keep your automation in the sprint, which a lot of teams struggle with. Uh, so, so that's it. Uh, I'm done. Oh, well, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? I've got all these contacts that stay in the list. That's a bit rubbish. Maybe we should delete them. Yeah. Uh, so I could, so I'll just pay someone to sit by and delete them by hand. How's that sound? Okay, so another thing we might do is delete them using uh, uh, using out the code that we've already written. Now, there are two approaches we could do. We could do what I just did there, open up the list, click on the button, and so forth. Or we could delete them using uh, a REST API. Uh, I've got 15 minutes left. I'm not sure whether I'll get through all the code. We'll see how far we get. Because the first thing I want to do is, before I delete them, this code here, given the following contact exists, do we need to do that through the UI? We've already proved that that screen works. There's no point laboring the point. We can do that uh, through a REST API as well. So what I'm going to do here is, in this bit of code, I'm going to refactor the attempts to code. So what I'd really like to do is say, 
add a new contact with details, that's all right. We still want that to work. But I want to be able to say something like via the uh, API or something. I'm just making that up. I want to be able to switch over to API mode without touching any of my existing logic. So here, I'll need this to return and add a new contact and not a performable because I want to add a method via the API. Now there are, to do this cleanly, this is a separate concern, so it's a separate task, yeah? So I'm going to need something like, uh, how would I write this? Uh, using the REST API, add contact with details. Uh, and I have some contact details, I believe. Uh, so I've just created, or I could create a dedicated task just for adding. Uh, I'll just show you a few different techniques here. So there's not one absolute way of doing this. You're designing a DSL, so the DSL is whatever you find makes sense for uh, in the context of your project. So I'm, I'm mixing a few ways of doing things here. So I've got a class called using the REST API. And then I want to add some contact details. And to add some contact details, I have a map. And now, the if we go here, if I query this, well, here you can see, I'm not sure whether you can see, what the internal representation looks like. So we have an ID, we have a name, an email, and then we have a phone object which contains a work and a mobile. And if we post that JSON structure to this endpoint, then it will create a new object for us, a new contact. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's Java, so it's clunky to get the JSON stuff, but it's still relatively straightforward. So what I can do is create a map, string to object, uh, contact JSON, new hash map, and then I want to add just basically in a real project, I'd figure out a more sustainable way of doing this, but I'll just do it by hand for here. So I want to put, so what was it? Name, contact, get name, email, contact email, and then put phone. I'm going to need a new map here. So, can use a guava immutable map of, and I want to a mobile. From the mobile field. And the, uh, what was the other one, work. From the work field, so I'm just creating a little bit of JSON, and now I want to call the REST API, but the tricky thing here, this is a function that returns a performable, so we need to return a performable that does that job. We can't just do the job here. We kind of could, but it'd be messy. Uh, wouldn't really be the way you're supposed to do things. So what we're going to do is basically uh, use the task class. And the task class has a couple of things that we can work with. Uh, for example, we can take the, the task where uh, and we can, we don't really need a title here, but so Sally adds a new contact and this would be an actor, we're passing an actor and we do some stuff. So what we're really doing here is a bit of rest assured logic. Uh, so rest assured. So what do I want? I want a uh, content type. Is everyone familiar with the rest assured? Uh, so application JSON. 
uh, what do I want? Content type. I want a body, which would be the content, the JSON content, and I want to post it to the URL that uh, this particular endpoint. So obviously, I do this a little bit more cleanly uh, if I want in a real application. Here, all I'm doing is running and creating an arbitrary task. Uh, on the fly, creating everything, inlining everything. In a some more sustainable approach, I'd create an object to do this. And I might refactor this if this doesn't work the way I want it to. Uh, so, actually, yeah, I will do it. I will do this properly. Sorry, guys, I'm going to scrap this and refactor it all. It looks a bit too rubbish. So, what I really want to do here is add a new contact with details. I want to, oh, should I create a new class for this? Feels like it deserves its own class. Yeah? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> More work. Uh, so let's refactor all this. That will be useful. Uh, actually, let's make this thing, the whole added new contact with details. Let's uh, make this the performable for now. No, I'll make a separate class because I might want to do a delete afterwards. So I want a uh, add contact via the API with details contact. And I'm going to use the same approach as I had previously. So tasks, so this is an API task. It, Implements performable. We have a perform as method. Uh, now, in a real application, we will often do this because often you'll need to keep track of tokens to query REST APIs so the actor can keep track of the tokens. Uh, so there is a reason that we have an actor floating around. Uh, so return new. Uh, add contact via the API. Uh, we're going to pass in the, the contact details. Create a constructor. This is the same pattern as we used previously. And default constructor. And here we have that logic that we had earlier, except we don't need the tasks where we just actually do the work. Uh, and, yep, that should body post, that should do the trick. So let's run this and see if it works. Now I'm running out of time, so basically the end goal of, if we take this to its full extent and delete after we create, then when we create, the JSON service will return the ID so that we can get hold of the ID. And, well, that crashed. And then we can use that ID to call a delete endpoint. So I managed to break the first one. Second one worked, broke the first one. Uh, I'm not sure what I did to upset it. Let's run that again. Or let's see, try and figure that out. Uh, so we've got well, a collection containing Sarah Jane's, but the actual, it got Joe Bloggs. Hmm, interesting. I may have upset it with my mucking around with the data. It 
So now you see it's not actually that we're in the second test. It's already queried the REST API. So it's going straight to displaying the application. Heroku might be a little bit slow for some reason. So while that runs, since we've got, we're almost out of time, uh, does anyone have any questions? Here we go. They both worked. So, yeah, the, to get to the deleting point, all we would need to do uh, is basically record the ID in a thread local or static variable and then invoke the delete endpoint with the ID. So it's uh, the uh, whatever the uh, this URL slash whatever the number is. You say you post a delete there and it would delete it. Uh, but what we would do is we would place that, we have a before, we'd have an after method. And in that after method, at this point, we'd go and call the endpoint on the IDs that we recorded. So unfortunately, we don't have time to go through all of that in this session, because I think I talked too much. But we, do we have time for any questions? No. Okay, well, I will be around afterwards anyway if you want to come and ask questions or uh, have a chat. Well, thank you.